Shla, Wurgate Falsha and Shahanak Pig Okaj Fear Special to Agus Major Keller, Nahimri is Fars, the Comertish, Laurie Maher, Nikki Rackard, Christy Ring, Corn Joseph Econica, Agus and Corn Talton. Ladies and gentlemen, you are very welcome here this evening to the inaugural awards night for the Laurie Maher, Nikki Rackard, Christy Ring, Joe McDonough, and Talton Cup competitions. We extend a very special welcome to all who are watching on our website, gaa.ie, both here at home and around the world. Tonight is a night for celebrating, but it's also a chance for us to remember those who are no longer with us. We look forward to reminiscing about the terrific GA season we have had as we honour the players who set the championship alight. We will start by presenting awards to the 15 players selected from the Laurie Maher, Nikki Rackard and Christy Ring competition. After that, we will honour the selection for the Joe McDonough Cup with our final 15 awards being presented to the winners from the Talton Cup. Five Player of the Year awards will be presented before we conclude this evening's formalities. So let us image Martian, but while I'm false, a car with Uktaran Komaluklaske, Larry McCarthy, to say a few words. Ah, sorum. Fight to Kuroi Galer, Gun Okaid Brunt to Shaw, the Park and Crocky Gunot. Um, Brunt for Gradham, Er Scott and Rory, Craveca, Shows of McDonough, and the Champions 15, August Curran Talton. August then in Cogardicus, let the Himrori Galer, Atta Guiv Gradham and Ocht. Um, welcome. I'm delighted to welcome you all here for, to honour our teams, our teams of the year, in the Joe Mack, in the Christie Ring, in the Nicky Rackard, Lowry Marr, and Talton Cups. Um, and apologies to the McDonough family for saying Joe Mack. Um, we promote a team game, ladies and gentlemen, and to be picked as a county representative is an honour bestowed on a select few. But we've always reserved a place for sporting heroes and for celebrating those who are cut above in terms of inspiration and influence. And gathered here tonight are our outstanding players who lit up these competitions throughout the summer and who played a huge role, an integral role, in what was a very, very successful inter-county season. These are our all-stars, ladies and gentlemen. We have great games, we have great players, and who bring games to life. And I want to th pay tribute to you all, and I want to pay tribute to your families in particular. I also want to pay tribute to your clubs and the communities that you all proudly represent. Of all the decisions that we've made over the years, ladies and gentlemen, around formats and structures, few if any have been as successful as the introduction of the Christie Ring, the Nicky Rackard, Lowry Marr and Joe McDonough Cups. Competition, competitive games with a chance to be crowned champions here in Croke Park is a prize that continues to bring out the best in all of you. And 22, 2022 was no different. Antrim, Kildare, Tyrone and Loud took the honours on this occasion, but they were pushed all the way and that's manifested in the fact that there are 13 counties represented here this evening. And they've all been honoured, of course. It was that successful tiered approach um, in hurling that was the driver to, have a move, to create a similar structure in football. And after a long debate, led by Eero and John Horn, the Talton Cup joined the fixture calendar in 2022. It's a credit to every one of the counties involved in that competition that they seize the opportunity on offer. It was extremely keenly contested and great performances right up to the final when Westmead edged out Cavan. And they, in their own way, made a statement for what the, the great competition this can be. The public also bought into it, as can be seen in the reception that the Westmead team got in Mullingar on the night they won. They got a better reception in Moat the following night. And a very good friend of mine who owns a hostelry in this city phoned me on Monday evening and told me not to worry about the Talton Cup at all. It's in safe hands. Westmead are on the beer here tonight and are celebrating like there's no tomorrow. So thank you, Westmead. Um, for an organisation that's, that's criticised quite often and been very, about being slow in our approach to change, we've embraced significant change, I would argue, over the years in our championships. Way back in 1997, we gave the opportunity to the runners-up in the Munster and Leinster Championships to go through the back door. But, and all sports evolve. And, but now I believe at the moment we have a structure um, that is more equitable and also gives, which is most important, our clubs the certainty and the window of opportunity that they crave for their own games. While this is a wonderful night of celebration, there's a great poignancy about it as well, ladies and gentlemen, due to the absence of the great talent of Damien Casey. 
Throughout his career, Damien was a colossus. At 29, he'd already scored 400, smashed the 400-point mark in, in championship hurling, had scored in every one of his 40 games for Tyrone, and was capable of so much more until he was taken all too soon from us. In the scoring charts, he was on the same plateau as people like Canning, Shefflin, Reid, and Horgan, and only those have scored more than him. Undoubtedly, we all mourn his loss, and on an evening like this evening, we extend our sympathies to his parents, Sean and Susan, and his sisters, Louise and Catherine. We also extend our sympathies to his club, on Rua, and to the broader GAA family. A yes dear on him dealish. Our thanks, or my thanks, to the magnificent staff in Croke Park for organising this event, particularly Lorena Kelly, and we wish you all an enjoyable evening. Hakyon, Common Luke Class Grail, Kogardicus, Sarish, Milabuikus, Agus Win, Lawn Tana Vasaniha, Goramila Magur. Mila Buehas, Larry Ashim, but while I'm Falchaker and Nishri, Freev Imanok and GPA, Tom Parsons to say a few words. Uktaran Kumaluka Scale, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and to my fellow players, it's an absolute pleasure and privilege to stand here and speak on behalf of players tonight. And what a fantastic night to have the first standalone Champion 15 All-Star Awards. And that's a very significant night and a very important night in the diary. Folks, today I was reflecting on why do kids, why do children love athletes? Why do we see hundreds and thousands of kids after big games, after big club games, big championship games, inter-county games, flock to the pitches to, to get autographs and pitches, uh, pictures with, with, with athletes, with our players. And that's because athletes and the players here today, you follow your dreams. You follow your dreams. And kids want to follow, follow their dreams. And you inspire hundreds and thousands of kids to play our games. And that's a very significant thing. And as a former player, I know the sacrifice, the commitment, the time, the energy that you need to put in to represent your club, represent your county, and be here tonight to compete for all Ireland's and to be receiving an All-Star. But I also know the time and commitment it takes to your partners, to your families, to your club, and the people around you. So huge respect and thank you for that time, energy, and commitment. Folks, tonight is about celebration, but it's also about perspective and about taking time to remember. And tonight we remember our colleague, our teammate, our brother, our friend, Damien Casey, who on and off the field was a symbol of everything that's good about Gaelic games, a leader on the pitch and a leader off the, off the pitch. And I know tonight an award seems insignificant when you lose somebody that you love, but I hope for the family of Damien Casey that this award is a symbol of the esteem Damien has been held in by players, by the Gaelic family, and everybody in this room. And I also want to reflect, I know there's people from Sligo in the room, county board, Sligo players, family, on the, on the loss and the tragic loss of, of Red Oak Murphy, who was an incredible player on the field and person off the field. And again, an incredible person and a life lost too early. So on behalf of inter-county players, and behalf of every, on behalf of everyone here today, I would just like to take a moment to reflect on those that can't be here. Folks, a quote that I've heard in sport and in life that I think is so important, and you might have heard it, is that we should live as if you die tomorrow, and you should learn as if you live forever. And think about that for a second. You should live as if you'll die tomorrow, and you should learn as if you live forever. And I always remember that because as a sports person, if you play every game as if you, there's no guarantee of another game, that's when you play with freedom. If you continue to learn and adapt and develop in your game, that's what will bring you success. And any of the players here today, if you hadn't played and lived every week, every month to that mantra, you wouldn't be receiving an all-star tonight. So huge respect. Folks, how significant are these awards? I personally believe 
What's very unique about Ireland is rural Ireland, and the Gaelic Games is the heartbeat of rural Ireland. But for our games to thrive in every county, in every county, we need these All-Ireland competitions to thrive. Think of the diverse range of players from counties today receiving awards and how significant that is. We need equal investment, recognition and opportunity for all inter-county players. And I tell you, I know the GPA and the GEA don't agree on some things, but I tell you what, we agree on an awful lot of things and we certainly agree on the value and the recognition of these awards. And I just want to say a huge thanks to the President of the GA, Larry McCarthy, and the Director General, Tom Ryan, for sharing in that vision and for the team in Crow Park to invest in, in tonight, which is a very significant night. Folks, I'm delighted to say that the collective voice of the inter-county players is very strong, and that's a very positive thing for the association. So my last words is huge congratulations to the award winners, your partners, your families, your clubs, and your teammates. A very significant night. It's a privilege to speak on your behalf and to be able to, and to, be able to celebrate with you tonight. Gor Margaret. Tom as Shin. So before we start our award ceremony then with the Laurie Maher, Nikki Rackard and Christy Ring team of the year, let's reflect on the 2022 season. Green Boren. Dara, I guess that fast I see your butcher shy good or Jerry Keegan. Brian Bornin is, I guess a Kim off, our gusts of door, Toshi Fos I get Toshin Ficky Miller, which has been over cold, I want to go gold bar, I'll chant it, so I want to read the gold bar. Ah, I want to be the Dara Eric, Fosaka, ah, the retrieval hero, and post going to Brian Bourne. Connor Cosgrove, Cosgrove is just a lower. Let's catch a bullshit, Daniel Glynn. Up the beer so put to Ord, a Glynn, that is Wilchie Green, Toshi Green. Just a child as you did in KC, I was with Colin Ella. Oh, Colin Bulta, she can't suppose. Jamie Casey Horror Transdot. Yes, what a season we have had in the Laurie Maher, Nikki Rackard and Christy Ring. There are eight representatives from the Christy Ring competition, five from the Nikki Rackard and two from the Laurie Maher. So we welcome Uxran Komalu Klaske, Larry McCarthy back on stage to present these awards. So we begin. Egevrihin Lesh on Kulboira. And the winner is Paddy McKenna as Kildara. The clean clubman now has four Christie Ring Cup medals to his name. Kogardus Arish Paddy Lushin. My who? 
Next up is the full back line. I give it a dole to Dermot Begley as Jerome. The Carrickmore clubman has played in a number of different positions for Jerome since making his debut in 2015. And unfortunately, Dermot cannot be with us here this evening. At fullback, Rian Bourne as Kildara. The Nates clubman has developed into a powerful defender whose ability in the air is especially notable. Agus Agivar Akahar, Astera, Mark Craig. The Kevin Lynch's clubman is a very experienced player and brought that to bear for the Derry Hurlers this year. So can we welcome all players onto the stage, please? Gorgeous Arish to Dermot, Rian, August, Mark. Next up, we move to the half back line. Inganzi Ibrakujeg is Chris Cairns as Tyrone. The Nave Columkill Clubman was a very impressive performer for Tyrone this season. At number six is Paul Divoli as Kildara. Christy Ring Cup player of the year in 2020, the Confi club man remains one of the most influential players on this Kildare team. I guess I give it a shock is Padraig Kelly as Ross Kamine. The Four Roads club man was a real leader at centre back for the Roscommon team that reached the Nicky Rackard Cup final. I give you a shout out to more than the butchery, Selena La Poole. Well done once more, Kogardis Lo Arish. We move on then to the midfield pairing, and they are Ibra Hawk, Paddy Lynham as on Longford. The St. Oliver Plunkett's club man played a big part in Longford's run to the Maher Cup final. Agazanakila Paddy, a Kai of Gansi Ivrani, to Keith Higgins as Mayo. The dual star excelled again this year around the middle third for the Mayo Horlers. Again, here's the Turkey Bulabus more than the Bucciari Olar Naparka. Kogardis Lo Arish. We move now to the half forward line, and the winners here are Egebereje, Brian Byrne as Kildara. The Nace clubman and captain was hugely consistent for the Lily White, scoring 313 over the course of six matches. At centre half forward, Ivory Heenjig, Andy Kilconnan, Ash Schligach. The Eastgate club man is one of the most exciting young forwards in the country, scoring 341 from five matches. Agus Ivory Doyig, Damien Casey. This is a poignant award following the tragic passing of a player who is approaching the peak of his powers. We acknowledge the presence of his family and friends with us this evening. The late, great Damien Casey was Tyrone's leading light during their successful Nicky Rackard Cup campaign. The Own Rua club man scored 264 over the course of six matches, including 14 points in the final itself. We welcome Aidan McHugh to the stage to accept this award.
Next, we have the full forward line. I give it a three jig. James Burke as Kildara. The Nates club man shot the light start for the Kildare Hurlers, finishing with a personal tally of 144 from five matches. Wearing the number 14 jersey is Darren Gagan as on Lou. The Nave Monina club man excelled for the live team and finished the campaign with an inspiring personal score tally of 230. August I give it a cooig jig to Daniel Glynn as Ross Kamoyne. The Podrick Pierce club man scored 249 over the course of the campaign, including 14 points in the final itself. Again, he used the Turgu Bulabus more at Marshand on the butchery on Lena Lan Tussock. Lads, unfortunately, the, 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 the good news and the bad news is when you're actually the last coming up for the awards, you have to talk to me. So that's kind of the good and bad news. James, congratulations. First of all, what does winning an award like this mean to you? Yeah, no, it means a lot. Um, it's great to get recognised for performances, but I suppose looking at the, the, the tenor lads from Kalaire that started and the, the whole panel, like it's great just, it's, this is much for them as well, like it's great. I suppose personally to get it, but um, there's an awful lot of lads that could have been up here as well and, instead of me, so no, it's brilliant. When the final whistle left, I'll just move in here. When the final whistle went, who and what were you thinking of? Oh, uh, words can't describe like anything at all. Um, just everything for family and management and players. Like, as he said, anyone could have been here, so it's great to get a award to represent the county. And finally, moving on to yourself, you're smiling there. What did you make of the whole campaign this year? Ah, uh, I I suppose uh, it was it was nice for I suppose the rest common we got to the final like the whole the whole journey like you're down in in the middle of November train and it's nice to get out and play on Crow Park which is the joy and I suppose as I as I said before like there's a lot of lads I, in the rest common team that could have, could have been up here as well so it was a good good year and look at it's it's a great competition it's, it's run very well so have you managed to look back at the final yet? Uh, not. I had to, we looked back at that the, the next day, I suppose, so it's, we have to just move on and continue on to next year. Congratulations, lads. Well done, ladies and gentlemen, give them a warm round of applause. Congratulations on winning your awards. Go my action. They, of course, are the 15 players who have been selected on the team. So just let's take a look back and congratulate once more those 15 players. We move on now to the Joel McDonough Cup, and let's look back first of all to see what happened in 2022.
Yeah, what a game, particularly in the final. What a season we have had in the Joe McDonough game. So there are five counties represented on this year's Joe McDonough team of the year. Seven from Antrim, four from Kerry, two from Carlow, and one each from Offaly and Down. Tos noi mwjanish marshen leshan cool boira. Wearing Gansi Ibrahim is Ryan Elliott as Antrim. The Dunloy clubman won his second Joe McDonough Cup this year, having previously won in 2020. Co-gorgeous <laughs> more, Lorraine. Next up, the full back line. Eggy Brudeau to Joe Maskey as intro. A talented dual player with his club, St. Endes, he made his debut for the Antrim Senior Hurlers in 2017. Co-gorgeous more, the joke. Marlon Cooley ever a treat to Jared Walsh as Antrim. This is the second time the O'Donovan Ross, a club man, has been named on a Joe McDonough Cup team of the year. And at left cornerback from Kiri is Owen Ross. The Ballyduff club man was arguably Kerry's most improved player in 2022. My shift, Kogar, just more, Arish. We move on then to the half back line. At right half back, Fionnan Makisi Askiri. The St. Brendan's clubman is a tenacious defender and also a consistent score getter from the half back line. Torigi Bulabos Mo, the Fionnan Agazeak Jacksuis. I give it a shay on Lawn Cooley Lart to Owen Campbell as Antrim. The Ruri Oak Cushion Dog Clubman is now one of the most experienced players in the Antrim team. I give it a shock, the left halfback is Mikey Boyle, a truly great servant of Kerry Hurling. The Ballyduff Clubman remains as influential as ever. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round warm of applause. Co guard is Arish. Bogamajurai Anish Gaji Lar Naparka. And the winners here are Egiver Ahokt, Keelan Malloy as Antrim. The Dunloy Clubman has been a consistent score getter from the middle of the park. August Inganzi, Ever Ani, Ta David Nali. The Belmont clubman scored freely throughout with a spectacular winner against Kerry, especially memorable. Up next, we move to the half forward line. At right half forward is Ibra J. Martin Kavna as Kaharluk. The St. Mullins clubman was a consistent score getter and finished the campaign with a personal tally of 249 from five matches.
An latasi lar inganzi everhinjeg to Chris Nolan as Carlock. This is the third year in a row that the Mount Leinster Rangers clubman has been named on the Joe McDonough Cup team of the year. Agus at left half forward, Ivra Doyeg Tadahi Sands as Undoon. The Port of Ferry Clubman is one of the most natural goal getters in the game. Gorgeous, more low shoot. The full forward line then is as follows. Inganzi Evera Trije, Talconal Conning as Antrim. The Dunloy clubman scored 255 in five matches, including 111 in the final win over Kerry. At full forward is Padraig Boyle as Kiri. The Ballyduff clubman was the top scorer in this year's Joe McDonough Cup with 364 from six matches. Agus Inganzi Ibrakuig Jig. Kieran Clark as Antrim. The ever consistent Ballycastle clubman was once again a real scoring threat for Antrim. So Lads, before you go, <laughs> you've got the short straw once more. I'll, I'll, I'll come in between the two years. Like, the game was amazing. The score, 522 to 424 is how it ended up. Conan, what, what was that game like to play in? Uh, it was a really tough game. Uh, we were happy with a lot of performances throughout the year in the Joe McDonough, but we were very happy with the first half. We popped against Kerry there. I'd say that's the best we've played as a team in a long time. And I, we had to hang on at the very end because Kerry threw over her nose, but we're glad to come at the end, we'll win. Kieran, when you're in a game like that, and it's, I think, 10 points up at half time, and you're just watching Kerry come back and the lead's going down and it's chipping away, what is that like? Um, it's, it's not nice. Um, you're nearly uh, watching the clock more than anything, so you are praying for the, for the final whistle. Um, but. Um, no, we were happy enough just to come out with it with the one. Padraig, for you, I know, I, I was asking earlier on, have you watched that game back yet? Okay. Or what's your reflections on it? Yeah, I watched it back all right. Um, we were disappointed in the first half. It didn't show what we were capable of. The second half, we, we came back all right, but we left ourselves too much to do. Like, yeah, Andrew wanted a better team on today, so congratulations to him. Well, we enjoyed watching you all. Lads, Gormila Maigrish, ladies and gentlemen, give them a warm round of applause. Gormila Maigrish. So, Kogardis, once more to all the players that have selected in the 15. Let's um, take a look at that once more. We move on then to the Talton Cup, but before we start our award ceremony, let's take a look back at the amazing summer of Gaelic games in the Talton Cup.
it up on the wind and over the bar. It's the last four battle it out for a place in the first Talchin Cup final. It's a brand new concept. It's going very well. It is a special day for these footballers. So here we go, up and running. Slido, they'll have to take penalties. See James Smith saying, give it to me, McKinnon on his right. And he gets among the scorers as well. Westmead looking to try and get the lead score. It's back with Kieran Martin. Kieran Martin! Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's fair to say we all enjoyed that competition. In its inaugural year then, there are five counties represented on the Talton Cup team of the year. There are six awards for the winners, Westmeath, four awards for the runners-up, Cavan. Sligo have three awards, while both Offaly and Leitrim take home one award each. We start Marshin with the goalkeeper position. And this year's award goes to Aidan Devaney as Schlegok. The Calvary St. Joseph's man produced a series of great saves during Sligo's campaign. Well done, Aidan. It's not easy walking all up this way up. No. <laughs> Next up, the full back line. Inganzi Everado, Jack Smith from Westmeath. The Scaries Harps clubman was extremely consistent during Westmeath's Talton Cup campaign. I give her a three on Lawn Cooley, Kevin Maguire, Ass on Irvy. The Callery Clubman played a captain's part in Westmead's Talton Cup victory. August completing the full back line is Evan Lyons, Ash Schlegach, Egg Ivera Cahar. The Shamrock Gales Clubman made a big impact for Sligo throughout their Talton Cup campaign. Cogardis Moore Martian. We move now to the half back line. Agus the a Kuig, Ta Jason McLaughlin, As Anghawan. The Shannon Gales clubman was a very consistent operator in the Cavan half back line throughout the campaign. In the centre half back position is Ronan Wallace as an ERV. The multi Farnham clubman was a very calming presence in the Westmeath half back line.
And at left half back is Killian Clark Asan Khawam. <laughs> the Shercock club man was a key defensive figure throughout Cavan's run to the Talchon Cup final. Guard is more Leshna Birchria League. We move on now to Lar Naparka, and the, the winners here are Inganzi Iberahok to Sam McCartan as West Neve. The St. Lomans Clubman scored 110 over the course of the four matches that he played. Joining him in the centre of the field is Sean Carabine as Schlegach. <laughs> the Castle Connor Clubman was a very creative force in the middle third for the Sligo footballers. <laughs> Kogardis Moore, Leshnaburchery, a league. Bogomajarai Anish Gaji and Lena Latosuk. And at right half forward is Garrod McKiernan from Cavan. Garrod was extremely effective for Cavan at centre forward throughout their campaign. Inganzi Ivaraku Hienjig Marshin to Ronan O'Toole as an Irvi. The St. Lomans clubman finished the competition with 12 points from play, including five in the final itself. And completing the half forward line, Inganzi Iveradoyeg to Anton Sullivan as Uvalia. <laughs> the road clubman was Offaly's most consistent performer. Gorgeous low shoot. Moving on then to the full forward line. And the winners are at right corner forward is Jared Smith from Cavan. The Lavi Clubman finished the competition on a high, scoring seven points from play over the course of the semi final and final. At full forward is Ivor de Kaherjeg, John Heslin, Asan Irvi. The St. Lomans clubman overtook Desi Dolan as Westmead's all time championship top scorer in the final. And at left full forward is Keith Byrne as Leitrim. <laughs> Keith scored six points in their win over Antrim and won six in their extra time quarter final defeat to Sligo. Before I let you go, lads, sorry. I'm kind of just creeping up beside you here to get you. How are you keeping? Congratulations. Congratulations. Jared, start with you. Um, what value, as a new competition, but what value did Calvin place on this competition, the Talton Cup, from the beginning? Uh, we put huge emphasis on, the from, on it from the beginning after a knocked out of Ulster. Uh, all our concentration was on it, getting into Crow Park playing in big days with big crowds in finals, that's what it's all about. So as soon as we were in the competition, we were all going to hopefully bring home the cup. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but uh, we had huge emphasis on it. I think it's been received very well in its first year and hopefully it'll continue that way. What were your reflections on the final? Uh, it was the final, it was disappointing. Uh, obviously, you went down, you finally won a win. It was still nip and tuck in the last five minutes. They got a goal and probably on the day, it was me, probably were value for the, for the win and we were just disappointed you won to win and he finally ran so 
John, we, we saw the scenes after the final. I mean, we could see what it meant to the players, what it meant to the management, what it meant to the fans. We saw all the social media footage afterwards, maybe some we weren't supposed to see, but we saw it anyhow. Um, what did you make of the whole year and, and winning in Crow Park? Yeah, uh, look, uh, we made memories that we'll never forget. Um, I suppose for Westmead, we, we hadn't uh, received days or had days like that since 2004. Um, we took a lot of guidance uh, from Jack Cooney and our management team after the defeat in Leinster to go on to the Tatchin Cup because it was an unknown. But when we saw the quality of the teams that were there and what we had to do to try and achieve to win it, we put the shoulder to the wheel and got across the line and uh, the scenes that were back in Mullingar after that were just, you know, they were memories for, for a lifetime and they're fantastic. So hopefully that's the start of a very successful uh, competition. And on a personal note, we saw there that you overtook Desi Dolan as top championship scorer. I don't know, is that a good thing or a bad thing going into next season? But congratulations on that. Was there any talk from him afterwards about it? Yeah, look, uh, my memories of Desi go back to since I was a kid. Uh, I went up and got uh, Desi's autograph in a restaurant when I was 12 years of age. So, look, those personal accolades are, are only a bonus to winning as a team competition. So to add that on to winning an All-Ireland competition with Westmead is just fantastic. And to uh, win it with Desi, part, is the, part of the management team, was brilliant. And we look forward to next year with Desi being manager as well. Yeah, that he's got his good books in already, huh? Good saying already. Keith, from your perspective, what impressed you the most about the Talton Cup? Well, just J John touching on it there, the buy-in, like, it, that was the first question I was asked when we lost with Leitrim. There was thousands of fans, little kids coming in on Park Sean, absolutely loving life. We went to a penalty shootout, just the, the way they bought into it, it was just, it drives it on and it shows that Kids like that never got them days out and sitting watching the semi-finals in Crow Park, that's what kids in Leitrim want to do. That's what I watched big teams play in years when I was a kid. So it just, that's, for a hero like that playing in Crow Park, that's what drives it on. So the Totten Cup was a serious. The penalty shootout, we must stress, you did get your penalty though, didn't you? Yeah, thank God. <laughs> Are you a fan of penalties or what did you think of them? Yeah, uh, the, everyone gives a different. When it's on, everyone's giving out about them, and the neutrals are saying it's great after. And but like, they're they're serious. Let, have everyone banging bar banisters and going mad. It's, it's it's a nice little way to change it up. And when you score, it's all as good. Yeah, no, it's once I scored, I'd be giving out a lot if I'd have missed one. So don't. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, thank you very much, lads. Thank you very much for chatting to us. Kogard, cool Zarish, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to the Championship 15 team and the Talton Cup. this place at this time. We belong not because of who we are or where we come from. Being here means belonging. Belonging means knowing you're part of a community. A community that has a place for all. Where potential is nurtured. Where individuals become teams. Who honour the legacy of those who went before. And strive to build a legacy of their own. Some of us play. Some of us used to play. Some of us never played. We all belong. Belonging means having a voice. Means being able to say what you think is right. Being listened to. Belonging means respecting each other. On the pitch, off the pitch. Belonging means rolling up your sleeves and doing what needs to be done. We all belong whether it's our first day or our hundredth year. We all belong because this place belongs to us all. RGA, where we all belong. RGA, where we all belong. Come and look last scale to arch dunya a leg on. Our GA. Where we all belong. Our GA, where we all belong. Our GA, where we all belong. Absolutely. To arch dunya leg in where we all belong. We come then to the last awards of the evening, and these are for Players of the Year. We have five prestigious awards to present, and first up is the Player of the Year from the Talton Cup. The winner is... Asan Ear V, Ronan O'Toole.
Kogar just more to Ronan. I just asked Ronan to stay on the stage. <laughs> you thought you had escaped. <laughs> Next up, we have the player of the year from the Joe McDonough Cup, and the winner is... Conal Conning, as Aintrum. Kogar, just more, Conal, Agus, Ronan. Ronan, I'll start with you because you did such an impressive interview after you won the Talton Cup and you spoke there about this was your dream since you were a child to be in Crow Park and to get silverware. Did the dream live up to all expectations that you ever believed? Yeah, most definitely. And I, Larry alluded to the scenes in Mullingar after and yeah, they lived up to expectations anyways. Um, and like we hope to aspire kind of a new generation from that because that's what I aspired when I was looking at the lads in 04, lifting Leinster. And I hope that we inspired some young kids looking on us that day. How proud are you to win Player of the Year award? Yeah, I'm very honoured and very feel very privileged. But I you know the old cliche goes, I wouldn't be here without the with the lads and what the management did for us this year. You know, they put in a huge effort and just thanks to have this little bit of recognition. Well, Kogar is out, Ronan. Conal, for you. <laughs> does, does this top off the perfect end of the season? Yeah, it does. It really does. Like, um, I'm privileged and honoured to receive this reward. And I'd probably have to say, like, thanks to all the players and especially the management because over the last two years, them and the background staff have brought a real professional setup to the Antrim, the whole setup that we've got, and we're hoping to drive Antrim on sort of thing. So. Well, well done. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Ronan August Connell, my shoes. <laughs> Bogomir Jirai and Shane Gudji Arcade Gradham Ella, which is the player of the year from the Laurie Maher Cup. And the winner is... Darren Gagan as on Lou. And our fourth player of the year award is for the Christy Ring Cup. And the winner is... James Burke as Kildara. <laughs> Darren, Louth have won their second title in, in three years. I know your manager, Paul McCormick, spoke that he wanted the perfect performance. And maybe not the perfect performance, but a performance when you went out in Crow Park. How satisfying was it to get that performance and end up with an, an award tonight in Player of the Year? I was over the moon. Uh, like, compared to 2020, there was no crowd there. So for people loud, it was great, because you don't get much days out. And credit to the management and the coaches that we brought in, because was lacking that bit of ambition, so it was great to get over the line. And uh, I think I think no one can say you're not lacking ambition now after that performance. No, it was it was good to get our we, we needed that performance after our break the year before that, and so it's good to get promoted and keep back on track. Well, well done, James. For you, I mean, I, as I mentioned earlier on, Tyrone, does it does it top off um, a great season for you, the player getting this award, and what does this mean to you? Yeah, I suppose it does top off a great season. Um, it was great to, to get back up to John McDonough. Um, I suppose as a team, that's what we aspire to, to play at that level. Um, so it was great to, to win the Christie Ring Cup this year and get the promotion. And I suppose as the lads have said already previously that, you know, it's, it's nice to the individual award, but you can't do it without the, the panel at 30, 35 and the management team and everyone who's involved. So no, it's great, I suppose, to be, to be recognised. But 
So as again, there's a lot of others that, that could have been in the same position as me, so. Well, well done. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause once more to Darren and James. My shift. <laughs> Agini Ushla, we come to our final award this evening, and that is for Imror Neblena, Player of the Year for the Nikki Rackard Cup. But first, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you all to take a look at this. <clears throat> you see, with a free. Still deep inside his own half. Umpires are looking at this He's one and that they're one. grabbing the white flag. And Casey in there mopping up the loose ball once again, just showing all the ability he has. Casey from distance. Has he got that one? He has. Damien Casey, was in general goal leader, and Jeffrey Nero, Toshi Bolt, or Damien Casey, August Hoshi, Bolt, and Jessica. The family of the GAA were heartbroken when we heard the news of the untimely death of Owen Rua clubman Damien Casey. Damien was the greatest hurler to ever come from Tyrone and from his debut in 2012 he scored a massive 39 goals and 908 points across all competitions. It is very fitting that he is the player of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you please to stand once more and welcome to the stage Damien's father, Sean, and Aidan McHugh to accept this award. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sean and Aidan, thank you very much for chatting to us. Sean, first of all, how are you? How are your family doing? Well, Grainne, I was okay that you showed that footage. I'm just thinking now, is there any chance we could swap places? But in reality, the family is a tight-knit unit. It was what Damien was all about. You know what I mean? He never left anyone out. And as a family, you know, the girls have won the All-Ireland Camogie. Damien was the first guy over the fence, even though he shouldn't have been because of the COVID restrictions, you know, congratulating him. He was that sort of guy. And to be honest, without family, friends, the network, you talk about the GAA community, but to be honest, you know, with this situation, we have had individuals from right across the community, right across the globe, you know what I mean? There was comments, there was people sent letters from Australia, George, Canada, America. It was absolutely crazy. It was heart-wrenching, you know what I mean? But the fact was that it gives us strength. You know, the fact that people call, the people ring, and the, you know, just the whole community aspect of it. 
and that's what Damien was all about. He, Damien was inclusive. He hated the idea of this exclusiveness, you know what I mean? He was a gay, went about it with a big long Kilkenny jersey on him and the knobbly knees, you know. He was brimming from ear to ear, the fact, and he wasn't that big at that stage, to be quite honest, because, you know, he was small for a long time. But that sort of thing, that was his first touch from um, out in Crow Park. And you know what, you know, ever since that, you know, he has just grown from strength to strength. He was an all-round gay. He, he, he just didn't leave anyone out, as I say. He was, he was unique in his own personality. I know he maybe had some of our traits, but I don't think he took too many of mine because, you know, after the game, and there'd be an odd dodgy referee, and I says, <laughs> I hope that God Damien doesn't go over and shake hands with that man. And did he? Well, you know what? He was the first gay over. And it, it was, you know, a testament to the man. You know, I seen him taking freeze and he had the hand down and he had gone be out with a towel, you know, wiping the, wiping the stick. And Damien would have a wee word with the referee and then he'd take his time and then the crowd would be shouting, you know what I mean, get a move on here, you know. But Damien had the referees all summed up and then you he had all day to take the freeze. So that was Damien. He was, he definitely was unique. He was a brilliant lad, a family lad. You know, he, he it, it just transpired through the own rear hurling club. You know what I mean? In there, we have the Irish school, we have the walkway, we have the camogie. There's functions, there's wee bits and pieces. Susan and the girls, you know, they make coffee, there was tea. The idea that no one, and the wee lads running, somebody commented, you know, some lad going to the Irish school the other day or whatever, and, you know, Damien was walking past wherever and he had his first name. So the idea that Damien, he left no one out, you know, he could talk to a two-year-old, he could talk to an 82-year-old. And that also transpired, you know, in his work, he worked along with, with Ben there in CRJ, you know, and the guys that came from work, the boys up in Scotland, the boys, the Hask people in Germany, there was no one who didn't make a, 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 you know, make the effort to call over during this period of time. So that, that, that you know what I mean, Damien's testimony is, is a total reflection of his life. He was special and obviously very, very special to the likes of us. Mm -hmm. On the Esco Road, he, he lit it up. Aidan will tell the story. You know, McHugh's Garden was the mini Crow Park, and that was from day dot. He went up and down the road with a hurl in his hand, and Aidan was probably twice as tall as him, and we'd watch him go down the road, and he'd be going to the shop. You know, he was only half their height, but he'd be bobbling along. And the comment was made to me by a certain neighbor after a while. He says, Jiz, he says, I seen them boys going down the road with them bots, and he says, I thought to myself, if they're going to the shop with them there, that man will think they're there to rob him. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that was it, you know. Where did his love of hurling come from? Well, I let Adon answer that question. So his love, his love for hurling probably came from my Jordan. Uh, <laughs> my father gave him his first ever hurling stick with a grip and everything on it. And ever since then, he just took off and went from strength to strength. And for He, he didn't start a wee bit later, like, but right up until... Right up until that last match, he loved it. He loved it, you know. What for you was his greatest attribute? For, for me, Damien's greatest attribute was probably off the field, to be honest. You know, it's great to stand here holding an award for him for his accolades and hurling and all, but there's more to it than that there. It's behind the scenes, the man he was, you know, he was a gentleman on and off the field. That's, that's the way I'm going to put it. You know, that was, his, that was his greatest, he's a, a gentleman, he's one of life's true gentlemen. And before I let you go, Sean, just what for you is Damien's legacy or what would you like it to be? Well, Damien's legacy, as I say, was being inclusive. You know, I know Tyrone is a footballing county, but the legacy that, and the, the, the testimony to Damien is the fact that the way he has left hurling in Tyrone, and obviously further afield, you know, all those guys out there tonight know him. You know, he played hard, he played fair, you know what I mean? He was respectful, as I say, you know, the referees, he was, you know, no matter what way things went, he was there. So Damien's testimony is for those young ones, for the old ones, for those not involved in the GAA, you know what I mean? He wanted everybody to be included in it. So whatever sport, you know, Damien was sporty, I can mind, you know, the, the, the Rugby World Cup was on, he was no age, he says to Susan, um, are you going to town, ma? And, Susan says, what for? And he says, 
I was looking at rugby ball, you know, and that was him, and he was only a nipper. Mm. It didn't matter whether it was tennis, man, you, whatever it was, you know, that was Damien. The love of life and the love of sport was totally what Damien was all about. And as you've seen from that, you know, if you knew Damien, that half grin, that high cheeky smile, that was how Damien portrayed himself. And there never, there never was a crossword in the house, you know. He would have come in, he would have been bantering about with the girls and Susan and give me a wee touch. And then, of course, Susan was said, you know, you're, 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 you're more like your father every day, you know. But, you know what I mean, my, my true reflection, and I think of Tom Morrissey's quote, was, he says, this world needs more Damien Casey's at least. Absolutely. <laughs> Sean, thank you very much. Sean and Aidan Gormaidi. It's an incredible difficult time and we are thinking and our thoughts are with the family at this time. Well, we've come, ladies and gentlemen, to the end of our awards night. Thank you at watching at home from wherever you are in Ireland and across the globe. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it here. Co-gardus more to all our winners. We wish the players and management the very best of luck for the season ahead, both with club and county. But until next time, from all of us here, Slánagas Amor.